When I was in school, I never had a biology class that taught me about evolution or how it worked. Things might be different now, but I know there are plenty of people out there today who still don't know how it works. So I figured I'd take the time to talk about it a little bit. Let's get into it. So how does evolution work? First, let's define it. Evolution is the gradual development of something, especially from a simple to a more complex form. So how does this happen in the context of living things? There are a few methods through which this takes place. The first thing I want to address is called gene duplication. As reproduction takes place, entire sections of DNA are duplicated multiple times, which leaves some open to be altered without losing any information. If you look at what I'm drawing here, you'll notice that when DNA is combined, sometimes large sections are completely copied over. So the DNA might contain two sets of genes for blue eyes when only one is needed. The next key component to evolution is mutation. Some mutations are helpful, some are harmful, most are neutral. So on average, you'll find that there are around 60 errors introduced into the genetic code during the process of reproduction. That doesn't seem like a lot, but what if one of those mutations made the person run faster than any other person on the planet? What if one of those changes gave them the ability to jump higher than anybody else? What if it made them extremely intelligent? That brings me to my next point about evolution, sexual selection. You're gonna wanna pick the most ideal person as a mate, right? Whoever you can find that has an advantage over others, big, strong, smart, whatever it may be. If the person has a significant genetic advantage over others, that person will be extremely desirable and they'll have plenty of opportunity to pass on their genes. When they have offspring, their children have a chance of getting that mutation passed on to them, in which case they're more desirable because of it. And so the cycle continues on. Next is natural selection. If offspring is born with a harmful genetic mutation, like say something that made them move slower or made them less intelligent, they have an ever so slightly lower chance of survival. At the very least, they won't prosper as much as somebody who's more intelligent or stronger. So let's say we have two populations of apes, and the first population is more intelligent than the other. Population number one has mastered the art of putting sticks inside of logs to get ants out to eat. That's a tool. Population number two can never figure that out. So they have to engage in riskier behavior to find food, like leaving the camp to forage. Let's say population number two, the less intelligent group, has a shorter lifespan by five years, and only 30% of their offspring survive as a result of their inability to use tools. Population number one, on the other hand, live to be 40 years old, and 60% of their offspring make it to adulthood. Their society prospers, and they pass on the good genes to their children. But as time goes on, population number two is reproducing like mad to keep up with their death rates, which means more mutations are working their way into their gene pool much faster than population number one. So population number one's won the evolutionary battle, but the gene pool in population two is getting more and more diverse, which means they have a much higher chance of producing an extra intelligent ape. There are checks and balances in all of this. Sometimes when people take a look at evolution from the outside, they view it as some kind of sentient thing with intention. That's not the case. That's just how things work. Of course the population that learned to use tools is going to be better off. Of course the population who's frantically trying to reproduce to keep up with their death rates is going to end up with more mutations, thus a higher chance of beneficial changes in the gene pool. There's nothing supernatural or sentient about it. It's just how the world works. So we talked about gene duplication, mutation, sexual selection, and natural selection. Evolution is a very complex subject, something I couldn't possibly cover completely in a 10 minute video. But here are some mechanisms of evolution which I didn't address. Genetic drift, the founder effect, the population bottleneck, gene flow, and many others. It's extremely fascinating to learn how it works. I might do a part two to this. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Discord. Thanks for watching, guys.